hi guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel i have been <laughs> away for so long i decided i'm just going to act normal and go straight into my booktube prize rankings for the octo finals so i was judging in group e which had um a bunch of titles <laughs> no you don't say yes 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 uh, um i'm just going to put the the titles here so we can move on to other things if you hear any children in the background it's because i live in a society right so i'm going to talk about my rankings from the book i ranked six to the book i ranked first and i used um stars you know like i ranked them one to five in six different categories which categories i got from um another booktuber her name is didi you can i'll share the link to the video in which she talks about her categories down below and the categories in which i was ranking them were character development readability writing style premise and execution pacing and just vibes which she calls would i recommend if you see me looking down it's because i'm looking at <laughs> at the spreadsheet i made with my rankings because you know i'm a professional right so number six was clara in the sun by kazuo ishiguro hmm. i feel like this book was hot at some point so i don't really i don't really feel like i need to explain but just in case you don't know what clara in the sun is about clara is a robot in the book she's called an artificial friend and she's assigned a family where um and in a in a world that's a bit vastly different from the world we are living in so uh uh the child who he is assigned to i read the child as like disabled or chronically ill and clara is positioned sort of like written as a very empathetic very smart character you know and we see her and the family go through all of these changes and until you know finally the child moves to a different phase of her life and it's not a spoiler clara's life sort of comes to an end as with in regards to with regards to english uh her relationship with the child if it sounds like i barely remember what happened in this book it's because i did not rate it that's literally why it was number six but also someone had said this i forget where it was and i have to agree this book read to me like sf written by somebody who doesn't really read sf like i generally rate kazuo ishiguro i've enjoyed remains of the day or a view of the pale hills and so on and so forth but this book it wasn't it like it just was not it it did not hit <laughs> i you know i've suffered enough i suffered enough and so i gave it um oi i gave it 2.833 on my <laughs> scale yeah because what i do is i take the total rating and then i divide it by the number of categories so it got a 2.83 didn't even manage to score a three to be honest like i want to move on the next book was the chosen and the beautiful by nivo this is um queer poc so telling retelling of the great gatsby and it features a character who <laughs> i love the way i'm not even naming these characters but it features a character okay uh who is in the same universe as gatsby actually she's daisy's friend and she's asian american and she's been adopted by an american family a white american family and been brought up you know white so to speak and she finds herself in this strange situation where there's now more and more anti-asian sentiment in the u.s so i think in, in some ways it will resonate to a certain sort of reader because i feel like the u.s is in a space like that now and she has magical powers so we see some of those magical powers but the magical powers are never truly like they never cohere so it's a bit like raw what's this about <laughs> you know what i'm saying um and yeah there's some sapphic elements 
um, we are threatened with like love affairs that never quite happen. I buddy read this with my friend Ruby, and you know we had a really good chat about it. To be honest, which I'm going to post in the in my blog at some point. The chat was really really good, and we'll do you know a blog post or like a conversational style blog post about it. But on the whole. I didn't care for it. That's another one of the ones where it's just like, I read it, you know. Um, I gave it a 3 out of 5. <laughs> and mm, it is what it is. And for me, actually, vibes are a very significant component of how I rank books. Just part of the reason I love this ranking system. It's basically like, okay, I read the book and with both um, The Chosen and the Beautiful and Clara and the Sun, I listened and I read the text. And for them not to be banging in two formats, listen, <laughs> listen, like, what was that, <laughs> you know? So that's book five. Book four for me was Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. The story follows, um, it has dual timelines. One of the timelines is a pilot, an Evitrix, who seeks to circumnavigate the globe and the other is an actress in modern times like in the time we are in the 21st century who is in a biopic about her life and so we follow and oh yeah the, the aviatrix disappeared which is part of the reason she is really interesting and so on and so forth and she was doing this in the same time as Amelia Earhart and and them and so that's one timeline and then the other timeline is our our actress and the thing they have in common is that their parents died or and or disappeared when they were quite young and so they have yeah like a, as i said a commonality and this book was long okay <laughs> it was long it held my attention for the most part but it wasn't memorable like there's something about dual povs for me they are very hit or miss you find the book that has um, what a POV say in the modern age that's hitting is a banging, and then the one in the past is like, oh, are we here, you know? And this is so odd because in one of the very first videos I ever made on this channel, I talked about a similar book, The Kindness of Enemies by Lila Gulela. Similar problem. In this case, same situation, the modern POV boring as all get out like drugs sex alcohol dysfunction what's new and the older pov is really interesting because of the way it explores queerness it explores um yeah these notions of um identity who belongs who doesn't belong um there's a, a native american character an indigenous american character who is written in a very memorable way like i mean i kept thinking to myself well i would love to see this story told from his perspective because the aviatrix is positioned framed as the great love of his life and so on and eh, well <laughs> and i mean family secrets really animate this book and so on honestly if the book had just stayed in the old pov i'd probably have ranked it higher but every time we came into the 21st century i'd be like this again <sighs> anyway yeah so that's why it was number four i'm sorry if i have i have the sniffles not that if i have i have the sniffles okay the number three was the five wounds by Cassine wilder's quad i hope i'm not mispronouncing her name uh which i gave uh, 4.16666666667 <laughs> and the story follows a family in New Mexico small very poor uh, community and these are family member he's one of the main characters son so this is three generations of a family there is 
the oldest is the matriarch of the family who has two children a son and a daughter the daughter the son is the one we focus on and then the son's daughter who he had when he was a teenager so they're all quite young um at least the man becomes a grandfather before he's 35 because his daughter has a child that's basically how the book opens so it's not a spoiler or anything and when the book starts the five wounds in, in the title are reference to this is actually really <laughs> interesting that i'm discussing this because easter is around the corner um like a, a, a an easter procession that he's going to be in he's going to be you know jesus in the procession uh, he's going to take on the role of jesus and his uncle nominates him for this position partly so that he can grow up because he's a man in his studies who's had like a massive failure to launch i don't mean like getting a big job with great benefits or something like that which you know there's a lot to be said about capitalism and not for it <laughs> mostly against it actually 100 percent against it but here the issue is that he's grossly irresponsible barely shows up for anything or for anyone not even himself he's on his second dui when the book begins or his first he's he's on he's just had a dui when the book begins and all that things you things i mean things could be better <laughs> they are not great is all i'm saying and so things just fell <laughs> on the side because of the wind and so um his uncle thinks that him taking on the role of this is going to be a chance for him to really introspect and change his life and all of those things and here comes his daughter who is pregnant and she's in this program for young mothers i mean like teenagers who have who are pregnant or who have recently had a child and there's a do-gooder in the program a young white woman who's running it and it's very chaotic like the energy is very chaotic because she really thinks she's here to save these girls lives and i don't think she really regards them as whole human beings you know like people who have agency and who sometimes make mistakes and so on the whole operation is being run by a bunch of do-gooders but of course like it's really being personified by this one teacher who they interact with at all times as they work towards their ged and all of that and then the mother who would be the teenager's grandmother um is struggling with an illness but struggling silently because her position in this family is such that she's not given any help she's not given any support everybody looks to her for for care for support for advice but no one cares for her and i think that's a, a common situation for a lot of women of a certain age who to be honest um they're not viewed as people they are viewed as <laughs> mechanisms for other people's growth for other people's needs and so on and they are not complete as themselves you know and she suffers for it to be honest and of course there are times when i was like hey i i'm going to you to open your mouth <laughs> but this book was written with a certain kindness and uh, and the gaze was very generous to be honest because it was for instance really easy to regard the man this video is really ridiculous because i'm not mentioning anyone's names i'll just i'll just keep putting them here <laughs> this is being said after the fact so i'll have put them here um yeah um uh, it's easy to regard him you know as a total I'm looking for a PG word, but a person who is just, you know, a total failure, like by society standards is a total failure, but there is some generosity in which all of these characters are being viewed. And I greatly, greatly appreciated that. And it kept me hooked from beginning to end, which, you know, there's much to be said about that. The way some of um, the stories resolve is a bit too tidy for me, which is part of the reason it came in at number three but i was gripped from beginning to end okay i listened i don't know why i keep saying this the only book where i did not listen to the audiobook was the love songs of w.e.b du bois with everything else i listened to the audiobook and the ebook with the exception of burnt sugar where i only listened to the audiobook and yeah i did the 
parallel thing with the five wounds too and i really 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 enjoyed it so yeah that came in at number three and number two was burnt sugar by avidoshi so some background i had read this book before right um i'm gonna say in 2020 i'm pretty sure it was the last year it might have been last year though and i um remember thinking to myself Whoa, whoa, whoa! And usually I do a thread where I have thoughts about the book I'm reading, and my thoughts are basically like, ah, whoa, 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 which were not very helpful when I then had to revisit the book because it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> it's not something I can put into a review, you know. I can't go all whoa, whoa, whoa <laughs> on my ranking. So what I did instead was that I listened to the book during my walks and as I was doing my tasks and so on. And it turns out there's some things I'd forgotten. So for me, the chief thing that animated the book was the mother-daughter conflict. I remember names here. Tara and Antara. And the reason I remember their names is because the mother and the daughter have the same name. Have a variation on the same name. And the mother is experiencing dementia and her mind is basically falling apart. And her daughter has a lot of unresolved issues with her, which she's swiftly realizing she's never going to resolve. For obvious reasons, your mother is losing her memory. You can't tell her, okay, now let's discuss that thing that happened when I was six or that thing that happened when I was 16. She can't remember. And Antara, who's the daughter, is also pregnant and a new mother in some of the book. So it's not just about her dealing with the conflict she has with her mother. It's also thinking about what sort of mother she wants to be and imagining herself in a similar situation. It's not like it's something she wrestles with on the page, but you can tell that that's in the air. And I love how, and I remember saying this, I think it was in a message to Don. <laughs> Don is my platonic life partner, but I also talk about books a lot with him. And he recently bought... Mm, burnt sugar but one of those things for me was that i find that books set in india have a certain vibe like for instance rarely is the character who we are following not the sort of character who comes from a household where they have um help in the house and so on um an exception to that would be something like mega majunda's a burning uh what is it called the burning a burning i'll put it here um, which I had mixed feelings about, but I like that it centered characters who are not from the sort of households where, you know, they have a lady who comes in to cook, to clean, and so on, and they live these middle class lives, and they go to the club, the club TM, which when I was re-listening to the book, when I was experiencing the book again, I was reminded how, <laughs> if you live in the Commonwealth, there are certain themes, because the club, as it was being discussed in the book Puna Club just sounded so much like certain clubs in Nairobi where I grew up. And so, yeah, I love, love, love books that feature not just conflict. I don't want to frame it just as conflict, but books that center these tense relationships between parents and children and the ways in which children, especially, but even their parents have to confront <laughs> uh, the issues that come with being in such relationships. You know, what does it mean to have a child? What does it mean to um, be a child? What does it mean to be a parent who might have wronged their child in certain ways? What does it mean to betray each other? You know, which is one of the plot things that happens in Burnt Sugar. Anyway, on the second reading, it held up and so I gave it a, just going to unlock my device here so I can tell you um, I gave it a four point no I gave it a four point five that leaves the perfect book the perfect book okay it got a five out of five the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois first of all talk about a junker I mean, the book is thick, okay? I read it as an ebook, so obviously, like, it was as thin as my e-reader. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a lot. 
also dual POV and I think we already established that I don't I don't I don't go in for that sort of thing but in this case in this case so we have Ailey who we watch it's part coming of age part historical fiction and this timelines merge at some point right and so we see this um, family drama of sorts uh, where there is our main character her sisters her mother um, who have connections to the American South and um, their family is sort of like integral to the history of the town in which they live for a host of reasons that are tied to the other timeline as I said they merge at some point and it's a, a book that deals really beautifully in my opinion with race with family with the tensions that exist in families you know what I'm saying what does it mean to um, be a man who provides for one's family what does it mean to maintain certain family ties um, what does it mean to value blackness like I say this even as a black person who has lived in Africa all their life like me personally I've never been outside Kenya for more than for, for a month you know so all my life has been lived here I've gone to school here I've, my family is here and all of that stuff and so you'd think that surrounded by all this blackness anti-blackness is not part of the things that I think about but it is because <laughs> the world is full of anti-blackness and so it's always so beautiful, beautiful to read a book in which um, blackness is centered and while acknowledging that yeah the world but especially in this case the united states of america <laughs> is built on anti-blackness you know slavery discrimination and all of that stuff and they show up in a variety of ways um but also a, a book that's really about all the ways in which family shows up or and doesn't show up you know what i'm saying and how we can obtain forgiveness how we can seek forgiveness how we can write and rewrite history excellence i mean the vibes are phenomenal phenomenal okay and uh, i feel like i'm not doing this book justice but one of the things i really really loved was the way ailey came to her own in this book at the beginning of the book she's sort of floating around you know she has this older sister who really goes off the rails she starts as like a good kid you know a diligent kid and all of that stuff and then drugs and just life gets in the way and then the sister the middle sister goes to Yale high achiever you know think of any award and she's probably won it and all of those things and then there's Ailey who she takes her a while she's a late bloomer to be honest but oh, when she blooms it's so so beautiful and I loved her family. I loved how much love there was in her family. It was flawed, same as everybody else's family. But you could tell that they loved each other very dearly. And I loved the figure of her great uncle, who in a lot of ways supports her and challenges her and gives her room to be herself and to really find herself. And I feel like every child needs somebody like that. You know, somebody in their camp who's just rooting for them at all times so yeah it really hit me in the feels honestly like that book really really hit me in the feels and uh, highly highly recommend it so that's why it was number five number five that's why it had five it's called five out of five which is why it was my number one book of the books in my top three two of them these ones ended up in the Top three that went into the quarterfinals basically i'm not going to be judging in the quarterfinals but we'll see if i'll be judging in further rounds it was really really exciting actually like um there are books which i generally would not pick up like i'm not gonna lie i would not 
generally pick up the chosen and the beautiful because it has some magical realism and folks know i don't go in for that sort of thing <laughs> to be honest i also could not remember um the great gatsby to save my life like i could barely remember what had happened didn't even watch a film didn't do anything just went in raw <laughs> which you know there's something to be said about that living dangerously as praxis obviously but um with clara and the sun i don't know the premise wasn't really engaging enough for me to be honest but i was i mean like part of the commitment i feel with being a judge is also like you know i signed up for this i'm gonna do it i'm not saying it like i was gritting my teeth or something but i found reading all of these books an interesting experience even just to be able to clarify what i like and don't like that's always such a great experience so shout out to robert for inviting us to take part in this and yeah for all the people who <laughs> also were in my group because we all took the time and i'm just really happy to have been in a group that had such a an interesting variety of books so that's it for me uh, for now thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe and i'll see you soon bye